Hello, this is the pilot episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast with um, Danilo from PeacefulAnarchism.com, me, and Dave, also known as Dave the Heel, and uh, Jeremy uh, from, uh, what is it, Sit and Stay? Yes. That's the name, right? Awesome. Yeah. The um, renowned dog walker. <laughs> so... <laughs> He's, he's the dog whisperer. The you know? Dog whisperer, yeah, right. But yeah, I'm the, I'm the I'm the whisperer from the East Coast. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has the he, uh, uh, secret Caesar Milan. Is that his name? Yeah. <laughs> he's got he's the, the he's the Caesar Milan from Staten <laughs> <laughs> or P- Pittsburgh. <laughs> he's got the um, the indisputable Long Island monopoly on dog walking. Right. <laughs> 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 evil, <laughs> evil monopoly capitalist. All right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So today we'll just, I guess, um, start off with how we all got into anarchy and volunteerism. Um, you know, some introductions, and uh, see if we can get to some interesting topics as a result of that. Um, so maybe Jeremy, why don't you, why don't you start off? Uh, okay. Um, I I took the the long route. I, I started out for up until uh, about I was thirty. I was a uh, I, I was definitely a, a, a very liberal person, um, although I was definitely the low info kind. I uh, didn't really pay attention to much. Uh, once I started my own business, I became a little more in tune and started figuring out what was going on, um, but not enough. So I ended up becoming a Republican, and then I got into the Tea Party. Uh, and then through that, I actually met my first real life libertarian. Um, and then, uh, shortly after that, I was in- introduced to, to another guy who was the first person who used the term voluntarist with me. And it, uh, it, it all kind of took off from there. Uh, I battled him for the first couple of months because <laughs> I was still, I was still pretty much a minarchist at that point. Uh, and then, uh, it was, Within within six to eight months, the uh, the old joke became true, and uh, I, 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 I saw the writing on the wall, and uh, I decided that anything that wasn't a vol- anything that wasn't voluntary wasn't for me. Uh, so I just couldn't have anything to do with the government anymore. And nice. So, uh, Dave, how did you venture into this dark world? Um, about middle of last year. This is the craziest story you're going to hear. Um, I was completely done with politics for about four years. Just didn't want to hear about it. Didn't want to talk about it. Didn't care. I was like, it's all going to burn. Who cares? Um, But I was very politically motivated before that until they screwed over Ron Paul. um, And just basically just shoved him down a toilet because he wasn't going to run the game. Um, But uh, I listened to Rowdy Roddy Piper's podcast, who is an ex-wrestler. From like the late 80s, uh, early 90s, mid 90s. Um, he had Adam Kokesh on there out of nowhere. For some reason, he had Adam Kokesh. And I was like listening to this guy. And about halfway through, like Roddy had nothing to say because he was like, You make such good points. I have nothing to say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he started talking about cognitive dissonance and all this. And, uh, you know, I was just like, Wow. And, uh, uh, started pulling up all I could on Adam Kokesh. I think I listened to the same Roddy Piper podcast twice just to absorb everything he was saying. Um, and he, Adam's a really smart guy about like getting it in when he can. Like if you watch that thing where he was on um, Doctor F- Doctor Drew the other day, it was complete. Like he just like like if you know exactly what he's saying, like if you're in tune to the vocabulary that we tend to use a lot, it, he was just getting in everything he could. He in, in wrestling, there's a term called maximizing your minutes. He maximized his minutes for sure on that. But I uh, started reading about – or reading everything he could. It was right about the time where he had gotten out of jail and was putting the uh, the Freedom book out. I read – or I listened to every – listened to Freedom and totally got it. And I was digging more – I didn't totally get it. I was about 90% there. And then I, I got Four New Liberty on audiobook, uh, which is – possibly the it it, like you know when people like find jesus and they say the bible changed my life like (laughs) that's my bible like for new liberty three chapters in i i just paused paused the audiobook and was like i'm done 
that everything he says is makes perfect sense. It's un. I listened to the rest of it and I was like, I'm 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 sold. Like <laughs> this this is the most logical thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Everything made sense completely after he said that. If you look at how wars happen, everything ha- boom, it makes sense. If that is my strongest suggestion to anybody in this entire planet it, i know as crazy as this sounds i wish that was required reading at like 10th grade in in high school uh, for new liberty which they would never do that because like after everyone reads it they're gonna be like i'm done with the state exactly. <laughs> why am i going to school but um i really do wish that i could like uh, take over every news network every every television station and just like me just sit up there and read for new liberty to everybody i don't know that sounds a little fascist but uh <laughs> forgive me <laughs> Um, just a little, just a little. Uh, but yeah, after that, you know, I just started getting active and, 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 and I was a well debater, um, on a conservative level in, in the status paradigm, um, pretty fairly unbeatable at that. Like I can still argue for conservative principles, um, to a T and, uh, but you know, I just, I learned through debating and, and, you know, like me and Jerry, Jeremy were talking about earlier today about the fire. You know, I just wanted to tell everyone you're wrong. You need to hear what I say. Um, and, you know, I've, I've toned that down and that's why we're, we're, we're reshaping everything to seeds of liberty. Uh, we want to plant seeds, not start fires. And uh, But that's about it, man. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I'm well-versed in volunteerism, well-versed in all the principles of anarchy and not communism. Uh, communism is not anarchy, Ugh. but um, yeah, that's about where I'm at. You know, um, I'm sure we've heard it a thousand different places, but I would love to hear it again from Danilo how he became an anarchist. Um, yeah, I don't really actually talk about it in my videos too much. <laughs> I'm always talking about my my guests, um, but um, yeah, from high school, I uh, I always uh, actually didn't care about um, you know getting good grades or paying attention I just basically got like 80s <laughs> just to get through it and I would devote the rest of that time like independently to study you know philosophy physics um, cosmology astronomy th- things like that and uh, that was my true interest right and so you know I was big into writing and uh, and so obviously you know I was asking a lot of questions and a lot of my teachers didn't like me <laughs> especially my bioethics teacher oh my god I, I took that cl- I took that class because I uh, I thought that it would be a very um, <clears throat> you know eye opening and uh, philosophical class, but it wasn't. Turned out that um, my opinions were not valid, and and I, and I was and you know it was interesting the way I wrote. She was uh, consistently consistently giving me like um, you know near fail like seventies and sixties, and then finally she you know she talked to me and <laughs> and she she said you know some something like you know you don't write like that like this is how you write and so I in order to uh, intentionally, um, you know, mock her. I wrote like a fifth grader, right? And and amazingly enough, she started giving me nineties, nineties, and hundreds. Oh. And I was just, I was just amazed. I mean, like, wow! Like <laughs> this just proves the um, <laughs> the uselessness of government schools. Like this is not about education, right? It's about you know just learning or memorizing and and regurgitating, right? By rote. That's about it. So um, yeah, so Re- I could reciting propaganda. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I uh, I um, just got through that, and um, and I continued, you know, reading philosophy. I never really cared about government and politics. My family did though, because they were big uh, hardcore Democrats. Um, so you know, when I when I got to the voting age, um, I did vote, but only for Democrats because that's what my family is. They're Democrats, <laughs> so I just vote Democrat. So the last time I voted was two thousand eight for Obama. Um, and then after no, that, I, I no. learned, I know I threw that after that, no. I didn't know. Well, you can't vote for McCain, right? I Cause didn't... he's like, you know, I'm going to buy everybody. <laughs> yeah. Obama. I refused to vote in that election. I just was like, I'm done. He's the, Obama. Yeah. The, that's the, the much more peaceful, right. Of, as, as he's oh, shown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. He's so peaceful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so snowy meadow. <laughs> so yeah. So I, I remember the Ron Paul, you know, uh, campaign for in 2008, and um, but it didn't really affect me much. Like I wasn't interested in that kind of stuff, right? Um, and then I started getting into like uh, G. Edward Griffin, Creature in Jekyll Island. Read that, and uh, and also what really really um, opened my eyes was um, Anatomy of the State, Murray Rothbard. And then you know what what has government done to our money? You know, um, powerful books 
and then I just it's just it's, this job just started fascinating me, you know. So I read, read, reading, and you know, poof, <laughs> you're a volunteer. <laughs> you're like, you're like yeah. anything I can put in my brain, I want to know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's how I still am. You know, I have books and books that I want to read. You know, I just gotta find the time to read them. Um, but um, but yeah, this is really an amazing um, philosophy. And so, you know, my wife continues to think that. This is just a phase. Like, you know what? She's going to, just like Jeremy, right? The same thing, right? It's like, yeah. my wife's like, you know yes. what? You go through all these phases. I'm just going to wait until you pass by it. You know, I'm just, you're all passionate about this stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. My, my parents, my parents said the same thing. I told them, I said, mother, father, <laughs> accepting these principles is like finding a bottomless pit that has a door on it. <laughs> Opening the door jumping in and slamming the door behind you. There's no way to go back. You can't, once you've seen the rational points of it, there's no way to go back unless like massive head trauma is involved. <laughs> <I'm getting. laughs> like there's no way, like you can't, there's, you're not going to go, you know what? I really think violating everyone I know just to get what I want is a good thing. Uh, like you're never going to do that. Just, yeah. just a little bit of pressure. Just a little bit. It'll be okay. <laughs> like the fire that you have, to spread it might go down, but this idea of it being a phase in, you know, philosophy is that's, that's ludicrous. It's, it would be like if God came down and was like, Hey, I'm God, I'm going to blow this up, blow this up. I'm God. Like for sure. You're not going to be like, I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're going to be like, okay, God exists. He's right there. Uh, I saw it. Yeah. So it's, it's almost akin to that. So J Jeremy, let me ask you something. Um, you know, I was listening to to um, a Stefan Manu video today, and he was talking something interesting about you know how um, you know how like born again Christians like like Dave you said um, born again Christians like you know trying to convert everybody right you like you found God and Jesus and you want to just tell everybody and, and they and, call it in the South because I'm from Birmingham they call it being on fire for Christ <laughs> yeah yeah so so a lot of people compare voluntarists to that like what's the difference between volunteers and republicans and democrats and liberals like they're all trying to convince everyone of their ideology right what is yeah. the fundamental difference and and uh, you know interestingly enough he started talking about nihilism and then he said um you know nihil nihilists are like like look at this painting there's nothing to look at you know look at this philosophy there's nothing to <laughs> there's nothing to understand you know <laughs> which is which is uh, it's just kind of sociopathic you know if you think about it or psychopathic i guess <laughs> Um, but well, what are your thoughts on that, Jeremy? What do you think? On uh, <laughs> well, which part exactly? The nihilism or the... Uh, or just, or just, just the idea that we get accused of being oh, well, like born again, you know, trying to spread and, you know, convert everyone. Well, Dave and I were talking to this to, 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 to an extent earlier. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's once you find out, you want to, you want everybody to know because, you know, the more people you can convince, the closer you can come to your... Ide you know, ideal society. Um, so uh, I, I think there's a lot of people that 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 get the fervor and uh, that need to get the word out there. Um, but it's you know, every everybody every it's advertising. <laughs> How else are you going to get the word around? Um, I mean, are we better or worse than, uh, the, than than the other groups? I guess it depends on who you talk to. Yeah. You know? Um, I've gone through my own evolution on that, where uh, where I used to be very very in your face about it and, and wanted to tell everybody, and and now I, I've learned to back off a little bit after after some trial and error and realizing that I had alienated a lot of people with that approach. Um, now I find it you know better to ask questions instead of try to give answers, you know, um, and uh, get people because I mean, everybody's gonna have to find if. In order to get where you know we would like to be, uh, eventually uh, there's going to have to be a, an evolution of the mind. So we're going to have to bring some people. We're going to have to bring a bunch of people along. Um, everybody learns at a different rate. Everybody learns through different methods. Um, it's just about finding that that in. Um, so we're going to you know, I, everybody. I, there's going to be people that, that learn with a with a bash or over your head approach. So some people can still do that if they want just not for me anymore. <laughs> I'd rather take my time and uh, help people along the journey. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, and because of, I believe everything's voluntary, I'm not going to force them to listen to me. So <laughs> you know, they either want to listen or they don't. You know? I'm going to force you into a voluntary society. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I've got duct tape. I'll make it happen. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't come over here. Let, 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 let me show you how good this could be. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what, so, Dave, what are your thoughts on nihilism? My, well, I, I, I say it nihilism, or nihilism. But um, I, you know, every time I meet a uh, nihilist, uh, someone who says nothing matters, you know, I. Uh, I have two approaches. I either say, why are you saying words right now? Why don't, what, what do you, the vibrations in the air that are coming out of your mouth mean nothing according to you. So please evacuate my area. Um, and they, they, cause they, they want to get this huge debate and you're just like, this debate doesn't matter. <laughs> Accor according to you, this debate doesn't matter. Your opinion doesn't matter. So why are you trying to share this opinion? Go dig a hole Stop. up to your neck and let yourself die. Uh, but uh, my other approach is... That's one approach, right? <laughs> my other approach is, is I say, okay, we're all just clusters of atoms on a rock floating around a big burning ball of gas. So in the end, it doesn't matter. But while we're here, why not try to be as nice to everyone as possible? Why not try to be have non-coercive interactions with other people i mean i don't see the harm in it if nothing matters you know what i'm saying that's what i tell nihilists but uh and i firmly do believe that we're just clusters of atoms on a rock floating around a big ball of gas that that's those are facts yeah but um you know what we do with our lives is is what gives them meaning um but the other point that you were asking jeremy about the you know being on fire for voluntarism um, I think we're going to cover that big time next episode. Uh, that was what we were discussing earlier. And just to say something about that, I do agree. Once you hear it, it, it is akin because I grew up in the, the Bible belt in a strictly Southern Baptist family. My mom still calls me every day telling me that I need to go to church and pray <laughs> to Jesus. Um, but it is akin to that, and there's no way other than it is to when you've accepted something as the truth, and it's so revealing, like I just said earlier, like if God came down and only talked to you, you would want to go tell everyone, hey, God's real, I talked to him. That's akin to saying, hey, government doesn't exist. And you want to tell everyone that government doesn't exist. You want to scream it from the mountaintops. <laughs> what is it I said the other day? I said, if I could sit on Instagram, for three minutes on worldwide television, tell everyone what capitalism is and what fascism is so they would quit getting the two confused because that's my biggest pet peeve in the entire world right now other than people who slow down way too slow to turn. Um, <laughs> I just want to mow them over and say, you know, screw you, go get a new car. Um, but yeah, it's, it's akin to that and we can do an episode on what actually capitalism is one day. But um, so I can evangelize about that. Um, uh, but yeah, it. I agree with S S if Stefan was making that point about it being akin to that because, you know, it, it's it, it. Those periods come to people's lives when they dramatic changes in philosophy happens. Like a f someone who's fifty years old, who's a Democrat, been a Democrat for fifty years, is not running around telling everybody, "You need to be a Democrat." There's only one. Like they've seen it all before, you know, but like if you was to take that, that same 50 year Democrat and somehow conk him in the head and say you're a Republican now, they'd want to tell every Democrat, they'd want to tell everybody Republicans the way to go. So it's the same thing when you're when you've been trapped in the status paradigm fighting left and right, back and forth, back, 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 and you hear, wait a second, none of that shit matters. You want to tell everyone you're fighting a futile war. You're arguing with the same. It's like the left arm beat. It's like if you had your two forearms here and you just started beating the shit out of them. You're, you're hurting yourself. Like one arm's not going to win. So um, it's just akin to that. You know, it's you're, 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 that's the only thing I can say is, is it, it, it fills your belly up with this energy of like, I want to tell everyone. And, you know, 
we're going to continue that next episode. I don't want to burn through all my uh, what I got to say. About <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing that reminded me of uh, because I used to study a lot of astronomy, like um, Carl Sagan. I read a couple of his books. Love him, and, love him. And Mishukaku, uh, a mm. couple of his books, um, and Stephen Hawking too. Um, and, uh, and and one thing that's fascinating is when you're studying astronomy and you're figuring out how kind of insignificant our civilization is and how vast and unexplored, you know, not only is our solar system and explored, you know, our galaxy, right? For like 400 billion stars in our galaxy unexplored. Then you got 400 billion galaxies <laughs> in yeah. the universe unexplored. You know, you, you kind of, I think it's easy to get an, a, a, a nihilistic view, like, what does anything matter? You know, it's, we're just insignificant little, you know, um, people on a, on a mode of dust floating in the cosmic ocean, you know, why does anything matter, right? And I think it's easy for people to come to that conclusion. But, um, but at the same time, you know, <laughs> you guys to come, you know, come down to reality <laughs> when you're thinking about that. I think <laughs> it's easy to get lost in that, right? And, and I think I did sometimes. But so you got to bring yourself down and then say, you know, we're living this life. You know, we have one life, finite time uh, on this planet. Right? I blink of a, of a lifespan. And why not make it the most comfortable? Like, uh you know, and and, uh, and 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 you know, I tell people when I tell people how important it is to follow your conscience, right? That you know, what I wrote in my last piece was, um, you know, um, a man's conscience is conscience is the only law he should obey, right? Um, I um, I think that's very important, and I think statism at its core is a fundamental mistrust of other people. Right, you're fearful of uh, what other people might do or are capable of doing. Right, so you feel like you have to empower bureaucrats to pass laws to yeah. forcefully subjugate them. Right, because you're afraid of the unknown. Right, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I, I, I I agree with that. It's funny. I actually I tweeted something about that the other day. Uh, I think I, it was a definition. It was you know my my definition of statism, which will basically was. The belief that the belief that that you uh, the belief that your neighbor has uh, cannot um, what was it oh the belief that your neighbor does not know how to run his own life <laughs> not not that you don't know how to run your own life but that your neighbor and everybody else doesn't know how to do it that's why you must have government because I can be good I know I can be good and maybe my family can be good but it's all those other people yeah. all those other people that are even <laughs> that's the thought I guess behind statism right is like uh, we collectively know what's good for the greater good right that's like that that's the uh, you know like uh, who wants to be a millionaire like pull the audience I mean how many times is the audience wrong right um, but <clears throat> When you have, you know, it was like a uh, big thing I've been talking about lately is uh, if you believe that democracy is the, if you believe that democracy is just and right and should be in place in society. And I, I told this to my dad, who uh, I don't know if you've been reading the news, but a federal judge in Alabama, an Ad Alabama uh, Supreme Judge or whatever, just overturned or just reinstated the ban on gay marriage here. Hmm. Um, and my dad was like, I'm glad he did it. You know, we don't, you know, and my dad's, you know, obviously. Um, and, and all this. Uh, um, and, and I go, I go, well, do you believe in democracy? And he said, yeah, of course. And I said, well, when gay marriage gets legalized, you can't be upset. And he said, why not? <laughs> I said, because if you believe in democracy, and I really want to stress this to people who may be watching this that might believe in democracy. If you believe in democracy, any adverse effect according to you, you cannot complain about because you believe in the system. And if you won every time, if your ideology won every time, if you hit every time, you would love democracy, right? Uh, democracy would be the best thing in the world. So you cannot complain when you put your faith in the majority and the majority doesn't agree with you if you believe in democracy. So the whole adage, uh, if you didn't, if you don't vote, um, you can't complain. It's completely the opposite. And I used to say that. I've, I've heard myself saying that to people who didn't vote. Hmm. And, and, and now it's, it's, I know this to be absolute fact. If you vote, you have no right to complain because you endorse the system that is going against your wishes. 
<laughs> I, think and, I think that's the old Carlin bit. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe it is. I, maybe, I, I, mean, I probably at some point hated Carlin because he was a liberal. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, he was he was more he was more of an ancom than anything else. Though. Well, <laughs> even then, I would hate him more now. <laughs> really, ancom? Not, oh, really? I, I didn't. I didn't not, get not that I I hate ancoms. I just wish they'd all go away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they can have their little commune, you know, voluntarily co- voluntary commune, right? Until it self destructs out of you know shortages and and starvation, right? Things like that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I give an ancom a fish and then kill him because he owns the. <laughs> He owns the means of production. production. <laughs> oh, really? To the fish. That. Yeah, I haven't heard that one either. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you know, my family is hardcore Democrats, right? So um, it's it's kind of. Uh, I, I talk to my mother a lot. You know, I get into a lot, a lot of debates with my mother about this stuff. Um, it, government is actually kind of a taboo subject, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, my parents won't even talk, so I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny, but but sometimes she because uh, she she loves the she actually calls herself a socialist and she's quite proud of that. So um, she listens to this guy. Um, what's what the guy's name? Wolf, Richard Wolf, the Economist. You heard of him? Oh. I remember you sharing that video. I yeah, watched that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Economist. I would I would use that term loosely. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, disheartening to you know to think that you know if we just if we just vote for you know this use of the stolen money, then everything will be right. <laughs> you know, if we just use the stolen money that way, <laughs> if we just subjugate people this way, utopia will have been reached. We just have to institute this tax, and then people will you know peace will have been achieved. <laughs> And war will end, right? Yeah, I just yeah. Like, at what point has a tax been instated to supposedly curb uh, uh, something that the, people, the government or the, the 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 majority doesn't want? Actually, stopped it. It's done nothing. It's created a black market, yes. and it's what uh, created a more need of government to propagate itself. So they love like taxing anything that they deem as a moral sin trying to legislate m- morality well of course because go- government's government's biggest job is to keep government in business so <laughs> how does it do that by regulating the hell out of everything so it needs to create more bureaucracy to cover all the new right re- to, to to regulate all the new regulations <laughs> and uh and the, and the system keeps perpetuating itself and uh you know what you were saying Danilo, about you know let's just use the, the you know the stolen money here instead of here well, you know, part of the problem is most of these folks don't understand the concept that it's stolen. So, you know, all they think is, oh, you know, like, you know, you were saying about your mom. I, you know, I have a lot of those in my family that are like that. And it's just, I'm happy to pay my taxes. And I'm, you know, it's not being stolen for me. I, I give my money and everybody should. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's so, so, yeah, if the money goes to something good in their mind, then it's, it's well worth it. And I, I stand by that. So. But that's the that's part of the problem. It's, it's that that's two separate issues. You have to you, you have to be able to if you want to use the theft argument, you have to get that through to them first. And usually, if you can get that through to them, everything else comes together on its own. You don't have to do anything else. That's one thing I've learned is if you can manage to convince somebody of the of the taxation as theft argument, you have no other work to do because everything else flows from that at this point. You know. <laughs> I'll I'll agree that is definitely voluntarists in, in many games the word is called win con it's our win condition our win condition in any debate is getting someone to admit that taxation is theft or it's stolen time which is slavery that's why when I say taxation is slavery I know some people won't agree with it but if I say okay if I work for someone half the time and I have no choice of it is that slavery? They say yes. Okay, well, that's what taxation is. <laughs> mm-hmm. So taxation is slavery. I mean, pe- some people won't agree because to work and to pay is is I won't say voluntary, but it is if you want to give up on society and live in a, a garbage can. So <laughs> you know that's that's the, that's another thing I can't stand is when you're telling someone this and they won't admit taxation is is theft. They'll say, well, why don't you just go live off in the woods by yourself and just not be a part of society? It's like, 
Can you not get through your thick head that the only thing I'm advocating is no ruling class? That is it. Everything below that, I don't care. It can exist. I just don't believe that there should be a ruling class. Play as simple. Yeah, I see that as the um, the appeal to um, antiquity, which is, you know, basically we have all grown up in a state of society, right? Most of us went to government schools. And and so life would be completely um, unrecognizable without it, right? <laughs> how yeah. can survive? How can society survive without taxation? We've always had taxation, right? <laughs> how would the pe- how would the kids get educated? You know, we've always who, had. Who will pick the cotton? That's yeah. the that's yeah, the grand slam, man. Yeah, it's it's also, who will pick the cotton? Also, the false dichotomy, right? So if 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 the government schools don't educate the kids, everyone will be illiterate, right? If if government do- doesn't, you know have a monopoly on, on mailing pieces of paper, pieces of paper will never get mailed. <laughs> At a $16 billion debt, right? <laughs> I think it's, that is the yeah. biggest boondoggle in the history of the government is the postal office. Yeah. <laughs> because the reason for the, the reason for them to build all the roads was for completely for the post office and for them to be able to mobilize troops, right? Yes. Like they don't like that's what I love about people. Oh, the government builds us roads. They don't give a fuck if you're driving on those roads. The only reason those roads exist is so they can drive tanks down it if Cuba attacks Florida. Yes. Like that's that's the only reason though if that didn't exist, if there was no outside invader attempts, the government wouldn't build one road ever. Well, if they if they didn't want to if they didn't want to control a monopoly on National defense and po- uh, mailing letters, the roads wouldn't exist. Well, uh, government roads wouldn't exist. Roads would exist, of course, but um, that's that. I just that argument is so ridiculous. And I heard it the other day, and I thought I, I get I get stuck in echo chambers for you know maybe a week at a time, and then I'll finally talk to someone outside of it, and I'll and and it's like like clockwork. What'll happen to the <laughs> who'll pay for the roads? <laughs> That's the first, what is, about the road? And, and I did it when I was listening to Adam Kokesh talk. The first thing that pops in my head is like, "Who's gonna pay for the fucking roads?" Like that's the, <laughs> that's the first thing that pops in my head. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, "Wait a second, you're gonna tell me that the power company is not gonna want a road to move their equipment around on?" Okay, there's gonna be roads. Well, that's that's the whole art. That, I mean, that that's plus that's, they're already all built, right? <laughs> Well, they, well, see, that that's the point I was going to make because I got into a similar discussion um, the other day where somebody started off with, but what about the, um, and of course it was roads at that time around, um, and uh, I, I said, you know, they're, on, they're you know, what Danilo was saying about the false dichotomy, like that's in anything, like, you know, most people who hear what somebody like us has to say um, will automatically, well, if, if, if you don't want the government to do that, then you don't want it at all. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want, you, you, don't, don't, want, you don't want government, you don't want government. What's going to happen? What, what about the roads? Well, as if, <laughs> as if, if we, we all woke up tomorrow morning and the state was magically dissolved, the roads would dissolve with them. <laughs> like there's going to be a road never, rapture, like the rapture never, of the roads are going to go to heaven. <laughs> they never take that into consideration. It's just like, oh, they would all disappear. It would all, it would all go. Where is it going to go? It'll still be there. And it's not like they're doing a good job maintaining them right now anyway. I mean, down over here on Long Island, it's a nightmare right now because with all the snow and ice we've had for the past month, like, because, you know, they have the monopoly, so they, they're the only ones that can fix them. And, they're the, and they also have the, 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 whole, the whole setup so heavily regulated that, you know, only certain companies can provide certain equipment and, so, you know, and they're still using the same cheesy asphalt like patches that they've been using forever when the technology <laughs> is and probably could be so much further past that if it wasn't if they weren't in the way um, you know and of course and my local government here that's what they live for because they love using this crappy patch stuff because they know every time it rains and snows they're gonna have to come out and spend days on end where they have crews of you know, fifty guys to do a to do two holes. Um, they can boondoggle union <laughs> labor that's going to vote for them every time. Yep. Like that's what I I said today uh, on about police. I go discount everything you want to say because it was about the Ferguson thing. I said discount whatever you want to say. I can actually find my quote if I misquote myself. But I said 
it's a forced monopoly ran by a union that does politicians' wills. That they're not cops, they're not peace officers, they're law enforcement officers. And more people realize that it's not Bruce Willis banging up a hotel or, you know, like, <laughs> like, no one's out there to protect you. No police officers out there to protect you unless their life is in danger or a business is in danger or something like that is in danger. Like they're not what people say they are. And just like the roads, it's a boondoggle. Like there's no reason why pension should be as ridiculous as it is for public workers. Like, I work probably twice as hard as any public worker on average. I don't get paid as much as them, and I don't have some crazy pension that the entire country is going to be paying the bill for. My neighbor is going to be stolen from to pay that pension to provide a shitty product. That's the, that's the crux of the whole situation. Oh, and to provide a shitty product. It's not like the road. if the roads were all Wizard of Oz, Yellow Brick Road, perfect, no one would be bitching ever, ever. Yeah, steal my money. The roads are perfect. I got nothing to complain about. <laughs> but that's not the case. It's a shitty monopoly. And, and I think um, people really don't understand why that is. Like, why is it that roads are, um, <clears throat> you know, break down so easily? And why is it the DMV is so slow? Why is it that <laughs> mail service is so uh, inadequate? And, <clears throat> and when I explain the concepts, you know, simple market market forces of uh, you know competition, supply and demand, and the price mechanism. I I get a lot of responses like, so you really think competition is going to be enough? <laughs> that laws, that that you know, we don't need laws. That just competition. Everybody's going to just be nice. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, I get that and. Uh, and I guess it, it also demonstrates a, a fundamental misunderstanding of economics, right? That's wow. where where that comes in, right? And uh, it, and it's it's really amazing how I never intended to study economics, but you know, learning about this stuff, you just have to, you know, you have to understand that. And uh, and the beauty of it is, it's not so dry and um, you know, like <laughs> doesn't doesn't make your your head explode like you know like Keynesian economics from. Uh, you know, from the leftist I universities, I, I don't right? want to talk about it right now. I'm going to get too loud. <laughs> yeah, I can't. If I could go back and kill one person, it would be Keynes. <laughs> so. But some retard government propagator would come up with the same theory. So not to say the R word as a trigger word. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know some kids are out there retarded. I apologize. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Speaking yeah, the kids, yeah. Dave. It's it's you know educating people on economics is one of our most important tasks. I think. <clears throat> here's what I want. Here's what I want you, Danilo, you, Jeremy, and anyone watching to do. Anyone ever says, "Well, there won't be a demand for that." I want you to go. How many ice cream? How many places can you get ice cream in your town? Just your town. They're gonna go. Oh, maybe twelve, thirteen, maybe fifty. I don't know. All right, now I want you to say ice cream shop every time you say, instead of say police department or fire department or <laughs> um, uh, prison, what, what, whatever you want to say, uh, X equals anything that you're arguing for. I want you to say ice cream, and then that will kind of make this, the, the, the analogy clear, and, and you can use something as frivolous as ice cream because if something's in demand, there's going to be a market for it, and obviously people want to sleep sound at night. They don't want people out in the driveway banging AK-47s, waking them up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there's going to be security. And, um, or, or, you know, here's another one I like to ask uh, a little bit older people than the, the ice cream thing. I say, okay, do you agree that having five cell phone companies is a good thing? Because they, you know, they can compete and offer a better product. And they go, oh, yeah, okay. What about five police departments? They shit their pants. They they their mind explodes. <laughs> they, they, oh, but, 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 well, without government, but, 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 but. It's, a, it's the same thing. It's exact. It's a service. But once you realize that the police department doesn't do what it says it does, it becomes blatantly clear. Or any government service for that. I know I'm harping on police departments, but any government service, the the DMV. I mean, uh, anything. You don't think if a private road company owns all the roads in a 10,000 miles, right, they're not going to have some kind of certification for people to drive on that road. 
There's not going to be some national committee that pops up that justifies you to drive on any road in America or geographically area formerly known as America. That's not going to happen. You're telling me that that won't happen. Huh. No huh. one can answer that. They, they, they have to concede argument or sound like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. And it, I guess at some point you have to stick to your guns and say, fuck it, I'm wrong. I'm going to stick with it. But I, I don't I don't know if that doesn't chive well with me. If if I get stuck and I go, wait a second, I'm wrong here. I got to know why I'm wrong. Sure. And that's kind of how I became an anarchist. <laughs> so. uh, it's like, isn't that, isn't that a Rand quote? Um, uh, if you, uh, there's no such thing as contradictions. If you find one, check your premises because one of them is wrong. I'm paraphrasing, but I think that's yeah, one I heard. I think so. I believe so. But that's, uh, that's, what it, that's what it is. They, you know, people... They get trapped in the, you know, if they get trapped that far, <laughs> it's either admit that you're wrong or keep believing a lie. Um, but yeah, like you, like you were saying, you know, of course all those services are going to be bad because there's a monopoly, which is the, 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 one of the, it, it's always, for me, it's always one of the biggest ironies when people talk about, you know, we need government to, to prevent us from the horrible corporations that would form into these massive monopolies that would destroy us. <laughs> Say what? what? <laughs> you, and then I tell them the Walgreens story about how Walgreens got the permission to sell liquor and exploded. Yeah, um, well, not, but not even that. that. Just the irony that go government itself is the largest monopoly ever because <laughs> they have a monopoly on everything they, everything they get involved in. They end up having monopoly on one way or the other. And uh, people just don't see the, the, the hypocrisy there. And that, that you know, goes right over their heads. Um, yeah, I, I like to compare, talking about police, I like to compare real world examples if I can. So for example, the police, I always compare like, look at bouncers, right? Look at mall security. Do you ever see videos? And by the way, the number of bouncers and mall security far outnumbers the number of police officers in the United States, right? So yeah. how many videos of brutality <laughs> do you see bouncers you see bouncers accidentally killing or breaking people's arms or you know <laughs> well actually that i living as close to new york city as i as i do yeah i can attest that i'm doing some of that but i'm probably i'm sure it's not on the same level yeah yeah, yeah yeah but they get fired yeah, exactly so they get well, fired they their job the exactly business will, well the business will lose all their money due to insurance claims again you don't know new york you don't new york new york do well then <laughs> so some of those guys will be in high demand <laughs> But yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I get, oh, okay. your, I get your point. Cop, cop, cop broke my arm. Okay, I'll sue them. Okay, let's tax some more so we can pay this guy off. What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so yeah. Fundamental difference. You know, mall cop, same thing. Like, uh, you know, do you feel safe around a mall cop as opposed to a police officer? Like, which one makes you feel safer? <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not the only one who, like, other than one of my best friends being a police officer, and me and him have talked extensively about things. Other than him not being in uniform, <clears throat> does anyone see a cop and their heart just kind of like skips a beat? Like it's not like, oh, phew, thank God the cops are here. Yeah. I'm just yeah. glad they're around. Like you see a cop and you're like, shit, yeah. a cop. <clears throat> like it, 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 it's, it's not a feeling of comfort and I don't know when that became an occurrence in this country, but I'm absolutely positive there in some countries the cops are treated with completely more disdain than they are here. Yeah, in Mexico they are. <laughs> people just people don't even care about the cops because <laughs> they know they could just pay them off. Uh, oh yeah, what is the famous line in Mexico? Uh, you're either going to get a bullet or a wad of cash. Your choice. Yeah. And if and, and if we kill you and we don't like you, we're going to go kill your family. So you really only have two options here. <laughs> yeah. No. Take yeah. the money or get killed. Yeah. Well, that like you were saying about the you know the fear. Um, yeah, I, I go between fear and contempt whenever I see a cop. It switches on and off depending on my mood already. Um, but yeah, it, it's an automatic reaction. And for me, it's actually been that way even before I finally, you know, made the third. My whole life. And I've been, a, I was yeah. a Republican my whole life. Yeah, I was, I was always very anti. I was, even though I had, I had cops in my family and uh, I have friends that are cops and I, um, um, <laughs> my, uh, uh, my my uh, my wife is uh is it comes from a family of cops so uh I have them all around but I've I've always had a I, I've never I've I've never been comfortable around them shall we say um but uh yeah it's most people they don't even think about it because they because again they they don't like Danella said earlier the unknown you can't you, you freak out about the unknown nobody well, if they weren't there what would we do we we need them to be there even if they're bad it's 
you know, it's either the few bad apples or, or it would be worse if they were, if they were gone altogether. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can't get much worse than it is at this point. <laughs> yeah. That, that well, kind yeah. Of, that, no, I was going to say that kind of reminds me of Larkin Rose's recent, one of his recent rants. He was talking about comparing statism to battered spouse syndrome. <laughs> yes. right? good one. That was a good one. I heard that one. Yes, that that yes, was that great was a... because, and it, you know, really on point. Um, when you exactly when you say, you know, what would we do without the cops? <laughs> what would I do without my abusive husband? Right? Who would feed me? You know, <laughs> clothe me, take care of me, and beat me at the same yeah. time? <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I agree. And to to go at Jeremy's point about the contempt thing, I, I used to when I first got into volunteerism, and before that, you know, being a a libertarian, conservative, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I used to have like, man, I hate cops, but you know, I'm I'm losing that. I don't know. I I don't know if it's because I'm become, mm, developing a better understanding of, of the situation, but I view them the same way as a rat in a cage that's spinning on a wheel. Okay, and the reason I do that is because yelling at a cop and telling a cop he's an idiot, he's you know he's a fascist, whatever. They're not going to get it. Just like a rat in a cage on a wheel, you yelling, that wheel does fucking nothing. That wheel does nothing. You're an idiot for being on that wheel. <laughs> so that's the same sentiment I'm carrying now. I, I, I just don't see the, the – I understand the hate that people have towards cops. But they don't know what – I don't. they know what they're doing, but they think it's right. Just like the rat getting on the wheel to exercise thinks it's right. It's doing so, – it has to be doing something, right? They – so to sit here and, and, and have this contempl- uh, this this I hate cops in my heart. It doesn't help. It doesn't. You're never gonna reach a cop that way for sure. And I mean, you know, like I said, when that those two cops in New York got killed, I said, killing a cop doesn't make you a hero. Getting a cop to quit his job makes you a hero. Mm. <clears throat> nice. And and that's the best thing I've said. And uh, other than that is, you know, I'm not a big fan of cops period and one of the cops in my town was me he, he, we bumped into each other i know him and it, it, he he goes you know uh man i just had some guy flick me off and say screw you pig and all that and i'm like yeah i don't i don't i don't start shit with cops but uh yeah i don't like cops either and i just turned around and walked away <laughs> and his face was just like what the hell just happened i was like i just don't like cops so but yeah i'm, I'm not out looking for fights <laughs> because i mean let's be honest if you tell a cop to screw off they can pretty much fuck you up any way they want like if they if they're having a bad day, so why why it's like going up and sticking your big toe in an ant bed and saying why are you stinging me? <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, or why are you biting me? You know, it's like, I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I wasn't I wasn't saying that. I do. I I would just say like the instantaneous reaction. Like that's what I get. Like I'll I will talk to them. I mean, obviously, I still have some in my life. Um, you know, former ones or or even active duty ones. Um, but uh. I just that the instantaneous reaction when I see one as I'm driving or as I'm you know like it, it you know like you said like your breath catches like what you know what are they going to try to catch me on and you know I I just I I'm I'm respectful to a point when I have to interact with them um, but I'm currently battling the uh, the traffic court here on Long Island um, and I also am, am about to drop a suit on the uh, transit police of uh, in the city um, because I'm in a legal detainment they put me through. Um, and I'm respectful when I do it. I just, I know the laws as they are, you know, the quote unquote laws as they are. And I know what I can push and what I, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm trying to be a thorn in the side. So I will, I'll, I'll push back, but I, I'm not stupid enough to just, you know, I'm not going to go, you know, when I was younger, I would, when I was younger, I'd flip off a cop and curse. At him. Not, I don't do that anymore. I, I try to avoid them at all costs. <laughs> the Lord just, the largest, the biggest problem with cops is, and, and and this is the biggest thing I can say, and I think we should move on from cops, <laughs> is it's it's a job meant for a freaking robot. It literally is. Law enforcement is a job meant for a robot. And oh, by the way, we have humans doing this job. So you have the wrong tool doing the job. If if a robot that had a working knowledge, like RoboCop, the new one, he knows every law, so he's obviously not gonna fuck something or mess something up. Because he knows all the laws, so all, all you can do is then get mad at the laws, right? But when a cop goes off the rails and does something outside of the law because he doesn't know the law, 
there is room on both sides of the argument to say, well, he just he messed up and oh well, he screwed up. He should be fired. You know, it's like how do you know all the laws? Like no cop knows every law. No, it's a job for it's a job for it's a job for a robot. If a to be honest, there would be not one person in this country other than anarchists hating cops if every one of the cops was some kind of AI robot that was infallible. That's fact. <laughs> there would not be this Black Lives Matter crap running around. There wouldn't be any of this other stuff. It would be, oh, well, the laws need to be changed. The parameters of this guy, of uh, this robot's, you know, programming need to be changed. Mm -hmm. So that's, it, it, it's a job that human error doesn't play well with. It's kind of tragic, you know, talking about this Black Lives Matter and, you know, uh, it's like all lives matter. Like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, white lives matter, you know, uh, Hispanic lives matter. Like, why do you have to distinguish? You know, it's like. <laughs> well, that's part of, that's part of the, the divide and conquer that government's been so good at for so very long is they keep people separated and they keep people at each other, you know, rather than focus on what the real problem is, you focus on the other party who's supposedly wronging you, who, who's, who, who miraculously is not the government who's behind everything and, and, and regulating all the stuff to begin with. Um, so, you or know, the evil white people. <laughs> well, yeah, there's still, you know, there's still a lot of this, you know, there's still a lot of hatred out there because people just don't understand that they, we've all been played for so very long. You know, and there's there. Yes, I mean, is there is there evil people in the world? Absolutely. Will there always be? Short of you, short of full scale eugenics, most likely. <laughs> um, you know, um, are there racist people? Are there bigoted people? Yes, there are. Will there always be? Again, short of eugenics, most likely. Um, but you know, governments perpetuated a lot of the problems, and that's why there is still so much hatred out there and there's a, a, you know distrust and uh um and just ignorance on on all sides and uh so when these things happen you know the, you know i mean the the black community is rightfully pissed off of what ha what's been ha what's been happening it's been going on for a long time and it just it's only now starting to gain more traction you know just like you know so well, they've been completely subjugated completely well, yeah, but they've been that they, they've been that way for forever, unfortunately, in one form or another in this country. Um, you know, it's just, it just it, the, the goalposts have been moved. You know, first it was full on slavery, then it was just segregation. Now it's been the you know the drug war and the. What if I told you the minimum wage law? This is the biggest thing I love to talk to black people about, and I say black people as in your color is black, you're an African American, whatever. Um, <laughs> I like to tell them that the minimum you're wage not, law... You're not PC on this show, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I, I, I really don't care what anyone has to say about I think, what I, I have to say. Black, tweet black person tweet is the, me is the and best I'll tweet way, you back. Black person is the best way to say it uh, because that's what they are. Like If you say African-American, like I, I'm not from Africa. <laughs> I, maybe I'm from Haiti. You know, you don't even know, right? <laughs> maybe I'm from South America. Like Why are you going to assume, right? My, but, my friend married a, a, <laughs> married a girl from South Africa who's white, and I always call her an African-American. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny. I make a similar point to people when they say that. I'm like, "What about the white people from South Africa? Oh, they don't count. Well, aren't they now African American? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, but anyways, about the minimum wage law, yeah. the, the minimum wage law was created in this country by a racist senator who had the idea that um, you're not going to get factory owners and business people to employ a black person at the same rate you would pay a white person, which is largely fact due to how many white owned businesses there were at the time. Um, you know, if you had 19 positions open and all the white people want $5 an hour, but all the black people will come in and work for $3 an hour, who are you going to hire? You're going to hire the black people, right? But if all of them have to be paid $4 an hour, you're not hiring one black person, right? Like that's the general thought. So when I, I love to hear people say, oh, the minimum wage needs to be higher. I go, do you realize that the minimum wage was created to keep the black man subjugated yeah. like that, that that is the sole purpose of it how do we continue jim crow like that that and and they just they've never heard that because obviously government schools aren't going to teach them that <laughs> and they're and obviously democrats are never going to teach them that because democrats need a political class but we're going to we're going to move from that but uh <laughs> what I wanted to say about the whole Black Lives Matter thing, and I wanted to do a huge video on it, but I just haven't found the time for it. So I guess I'll paraphrase myself because I don't want to be a mic hog. Too the, late. <laughs> too late. Oh, yeah. 
I, I don't get to do a weekly podcast like uh, Danilo, <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, 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 <clears throat> now I do. But uh, uh, I wanted to do a big video of like uh, if you really want to show people that Black Lives Matter, get off government assistance, kick the government out of your city, and start building the community back. Get off a of wick. Get off of food stamps. Quit having welfare babies. Quit, t- quit, quit waiting in line to the food stamps and start an urban garden. People, th- these three white guys went to the poorest town in, in Kansas and built a four-acre farm by buying up properties for one dollar. It's now making one million dollars. Now I, I know you have to have the knowledge for that, but if you want to prove that Black Lives Matter, get get off of the government assistant. Jump off the tit. And start building your community. You have the internet. You can do anything with the internet. You have a smartphone that instead of sending emoticons all day and texting your, your girl, look up how to do some shit and do it. If you really want to show the entire world that Black Lives Matter, instead of trying to get politically something politically done that's not going to work because they need you subjugated, you prove it. Show us that Black Lives Matter. Am I wrong, Danilo? Yeah, no, I agree. But by, by the way, let me just uh, interject. Um, I, I remember what I was going to say. Um, just doing, <laughs> just I was just doing my job, and I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. <clears throat> Two of the most dangerous statements <laughs> that you'll ever hear. Yeah, as you're as you're shoveling the dirt on top of a mass <laughs> grave. <laughs> just just doing, doing my job. Yeah, and, and it's really amazing how many times I do hear that um, <clears throat> as justification for a particular action. Like y- you realize the Nazi soldiers said the same thing, right? <laughs> You know, like <clears throat> so. But every um, soldier says the same thing. Every not soldier. just the Nazis. True. Not, true. I hate that comparison. Oh, the Nazis did it. No, every soldier, it's, the ones backing people into the gulags in Russia, the one putting people in train cars in China to put them in starvation camps. They were just doing their job. It's true. So, but if you if you tell a soldier, if you tell like uh, that American soldier say that, it doesn't register as deeply as if you say, you know, a Nazi soldier used to say that. Oh, Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> right? I get it, I get it yeah. because they've been thoroughly demonized, but they we somehow use the same economic system as the evil fascist. Yeah, it just yeah. blows, blows my mind. Yeah, uh, so yeah, so the minimum wage, I, I love this topic because that is like for me like a purely economic um topic for for talking to people, you know, and and you really have to understand economics and business to really understand why it's so, you know, fundamentally wicked and evil for the uh for the business owner, right? Um, it's like it's like if you understand what the government is, monopoly on initiated aggression, right? Um, and its only method of of action is using violence and guns. You know how can that improve wages? How can using guns improve wages? <laughs> you know, take a business that's that's entirely creative and um, you know. Ask a crack dealer that doesn't have a gun. <laughs> a person. <laughs> A person is generating wealth, right, and and creating jobs and improving the standard of living for everyone who lives around him. And then you just, you know, bring in the government, add, you know, oppressive laws and regulations, and that's supposed to improve his output and productivity? What? <laughs> and that's supposed to make everyone richer? Like, how does that happen? You know, you just put a gun to everyone's head, or actually, more specifically, just the, the employer, right? <laughs> And uh, and in the process, most people get fired, which people don't understand either. You know, like like everybody, how can minimum wage be bad? You know, we all make more money, right? Isn't that a good thing? Don't you want people to have a living wage? <laughs> I hate that term, by the way. Living wage is like there's means, no such thing it, as a living wage. It means wage. nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Like like you know, to a guy who's you know homeless and not working at all, not making anything. You know, if he if he has a job making two dollars an hour, isn't that an improvement? <laughs> <laughs> you know oh yeah that's what? the point you know like think of think of the like all right what's the statistic i think it's like 83 percent unemployment rate or something ridiculous like that for african-american males uh between the ages of 16 and 30 or something it's something ridiculous um if there was no minimum wage how many of those would be employed 50 yeah. percent more like like that would be an improvement right like even if they're getting shit pay they're still they're still employed. It just it just blows my mind that people think that minimum wage because obviously minimum wage has the adverse effects and and I'm sure Jeremy could tell you that if he had to hire people right now, minimum wage would probably break him. Um, actually, for me, no. <laughs> Luckily, 
Um, cause I, I was paying above the minimum anyway. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's funny you were saying about the living wage, Danilo. Uh, Tom Woods just did a really good show on that. Uh, I listened to today, so it must have been yesterday because I'm always a day behind. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's over 24 hours old. Not my problem anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, in, in, in general, it does. It, it hurts. It hurts most people that it touches because the, the whole idea, you know, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, we're, we're getting more money. No, you're you're forcing the the lesser among us out of work altogether because, you know, for, you know, the average small business when you, you know, if, if, if they're if they're only able if they're just doing enough to get by by paying people around the current minimum wage. And then you go ahead and raise that. Well, that's going to take a chunk out of their bottom line, and they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to raise prices uh, more likely than not, or 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 absorb it as long as they can, which most people can't. Um, but then the next time comes around for hiring, you're going to be more particular about who you hire because now you have to give out even more of your money to the, to these people. So. You know the 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 least skilled among among us always get the short end of the stick every time the every time you know the people that are supposed to be being helped. You know, just like everything with the government, it's and whatever they do is ass backwards. You know, from the, the the way laws are written to the you know the tight the, the the titles they're given, which are always almost exactly the opposite of what they actually are going to do. Um, to the programs they they institute, to the policies they lay down, uh, everything's. They, they do it backwards. <laughs> so, you know, if, yeah, was, depending, depending on which line of thought you want to follow, um, you know, it, it, some people, you know, if you want to go full, full on conspiracy theorists, they're, they're all doing it on purpose. Um, and they have been forever. That might be possible. <laughs> I've read enough to convince me I, that I wouldn't put anything past them. They may just be incompetent, but whatever it is, it, it always, whatever the, 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 the set goal is, Usually, the opposite effect happens when government gets involved because they're they're they're, they're the perfect mix of, of evil and incompetent all at the same time. <laughs> well, yeah, government can't be too uh, efficient, right? You know, if they're yeah. too efficient, then they don't prove that they're needed. Yeah, they don't create problems that only they can solve. Exactly. And and, and what Danilo said, and it still it rings in my head. I know I've told him this before. It rings in my head almost every day, and it. It might be the be- it, w- it might be the quote of the century. I might save that for quote of the year on our fa- on our Facebook group. But Danilo said, if you look at anything that the government has taken over, it it's like it freezes in time. And maybe you could structure that a little bit better so I could put it in a quote form for me. But that is the most true statement I think I've ever heard. Other than you know the sun's going to come up tomorrow. Like if you look at look at schools ever since the government take it, took them over. Why is every kid not on a freaking iPad at the house right now? Why? <laughs> Why? Why are they going to school? <laughs> oh, it's because we got to pay bus drivers and teacher unions and blah, 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 because we set this system up 50 years ago and we have to keep it going because that's the way it is. <laughs> There's no innovation once government gets a hold of something. And when there is, it's only to either get into a, a new thing that they're trying to control, look at the internet with the FCC. Or to kill more people. That's it. What's the greatest innovation of the atom bomb, right? <laughs> Controlling oh, they, atoms. Oh, come on. They that, the only reason that was created was to kill more people. So <laughs> that's well, the only time government innovates itself is, oh, hey, we need to kill more people. Well, come on now. Didn't Al Gore and the rest of the government create the internet? I mean, we have that. We have that. Uh, he drives an SUV. <laughs> Drive an S- SUV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, of course, but that goes back to the whole monopoly thing we were talking about earlier. Because you know, once they have a, a monopoly or as close to it as possible, they uh, there's no reason to innovate. Yeah, there's no competition, so there's not there's no reason to do anything. But that the, you know, the freezing in time thing that's that that that's that that sounds about right because that's what happens. You know, they just they 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 stall out and wherever they are, that's where they're going to stay. And um, I will add to what you were saying, Dave, about the reasons. You know, it's also to make them and their friends more money. That's that's when the innovation comes out, when somebody they're connected to can make, you know, has has something they can install or a new program or a new book um, or whatever it is to the school system. That's when the innovations will come. 
because they can all make money off of it. <laughs> if that's not the case, if somebody, you know, like you were saying, why, you know, why don't that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't exactly recommend most school kids being on iPads all the time anyway. It's probably not good for anybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's Of no, course not. I was just, you know, being... No, but in, in this day and age, there's there's no reason to be in school. It, you know, anything you want to learn, you can learn, well, up and up think and, of the, and just the just think <laughs> of the insurance savings alone of not having to insure an entire school and against school shootings and all the teachers that need insurance and all this. Well, they could be teaching a class from their computer at the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just just that's just one thing. Not to count buses. How many but how many bus companies would go out of business? Oh yeah. Uh, it just well, just it's just when you start looking at it, that's just one thing the government does. They control the Department of Education. They control federal funding for public schooling. That's just one thing. We're not talking about roads. We're not talking about anything else. That's just one thing that the government has completely fucked up since its inception. Well, it's, it's been even worse than it's been even longer than that, though. I mean, the, the Department of Ed was kind of the final nail on the coffin, but the, the introduction of the Prussian system in general. And that was, you know, what? Oh, well, yeah, I agree. 125, 150 years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, you know, that was the beginning of the end because that's where everything. Let me let me ask you, capitalist lovers, <laughs> you you, you red-blooded Americans, uh, what, to to your point that you know government will help its its people get more money. What country has the most per capita billionaires in the world? I'll give you guys five seconds. <laughs> USA <laughs> or China? I don't know. Or China? Uh, you know? I, uh, Jeremy? Uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Russia. Oh, wow. <laughs> Russia has the most per capita billionaires in the world. Hmm. And you know who all those billionaires are? Families of monopolized government utilities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, makes sense. That's how awesome communism is, guys. Yeah. Well, it go. makes all those. It, it makes everyone equal. Well, that, that's the that's the fascist that's the fascist side of things. But yeah, well, I no, no. I it, 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 here's my point. <laughs> here, and I really want to do an entire episode on this. Is every bit of government is communist? Every bit. All right. Even fascism is communism because it's the state before the individual. Even even. Um, constitutionalist America is communism because the only way it exists is through everyone saying, yeah, okay, this works. Even a dictatorship is communism. Even a king is communism. Any form of government is communism. You're just adding adjective to it behind that. So yes, Russia was a commun co communal fascist empire, right? And, and America is a Corpo fascist, as I like to say, they're a corpo fascist empire. So, fascism being just communism, we're a corpo fascio communist country. <laughs> so, the the more you realize that the the only way government exists is when the majority. Because let's just take Cuba for instance. If every citizen in Cuba, or, or just fifty one percent of them, went in and said, "Hey, we're going to kill Castro," how long do you think Castro would live? Honestly, a week. Maybe. Oh, if fifty-one percent of Cuba said we're going to fucking kill Q uh, Castro, he would be dead. But the problem is that fifty-one percent still believe in the myth of authority, and they want another government in place. That's what we're fighting. We're not fighting. You know, the what I said a, a long time ago is I said I know for a fact that there are Jews that got pulled out of concentration camps that still believe in government. How could you do that? How? How would you ever be in – and they're, and they're Democrats. They're socialists too. They're Democrats. Most Jews are Democrats. How? How? Well, just, uh, you know, <laughs> calm yourself there, Dave. <laughs> co co cognitive, cognitive dissonance is, uh, is a powerful drug, man. I say it all the time. It really is. You know, it's uh, – they don't, you, you don't – you don't make – in the moment, it's hard to make those connections. All you see is – the bad immediately in front of you, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to connect the dots and it's hard to see that, you know, it's, it, cause it's, it's it, going back again to the, to the point about the, the fear of the unknown. That's what it is because, you know, Oh, it's fear. 
you know, it is it, 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 just about everything that keeps us, keeps the whole system in place. It's a fear based system. It's what it is. It's, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's based on the initiation of aggression, you know, in, in, in all of its, in all of its actions. But, and how do you get that through fear? You know, the might makes right mentality. You know, most people won't stand up to cops or, you know, or even if they're in the right, because they're afraid of what can happen to them. And, in, you know, if you look, if you see the stories, especially, you know, that especially in the past three, four or five years that have really become prevalent, um, you know, you, they have a good reason to be fearful. <laughs> but, you know, it's that's what it is. It's, it's all it is. It's fear. They're, they're afraid of what they don't know, what they, you know. You know, when you when you say to somebody, you know, I, you know, I advocate a stateless society. Oh my God! Oh, this, no, no state! No, 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 no! We just, we just have, we can make it smaller, or we can make it better, or you know, it's like, but, but that, you know, that that's cognitive dissonance, you know, and it's and it's an ignorance of history. It's you know, we have five thousand years worth of, you know, about worth of of documentation of of, of civilizations that had some form or another of government and they all end up the same way it all ends in tyranny eventually you know either they are either the, the government no matter how small it starts out grows and grows and grows to the point where it takes over everything or it grows to a point but it's not strong enough and somebody comes in and takes it over and subjugates the entire the entire country um, and then it's just another, it's, a, it's somebody else's tyranny now, you know, so that, that's what it is. But people have a hard time letting go of that because it's all they've ever known, as you said earlier. Um, but as long as that majority believes that that authority is legitimate, then it's going to continue. I see. I don't, I don't, I don't fully believe that though. I, I don't think the major. I don't think the majority is necessary. You know, take take the American. No, no, I don't either. But yeah, but because you don't because take the you know take the American Revolution. What is it? Three percent, three percent were uh, you know out of whatever whatever the numbers were that day. That's that's all it was. That's all it was. That was fighting against the British, which is three percent of the population. Um, you know, if we put those those in today's numbers, what's that? What's three percent of uh, three hundred thirty roundabout is what like nine million something like that? Ten million. Mm -hmm. You get nine ten million people. Um, just saying they're not gonna, they're just gonna stop paying into the system. They're gonna, they're literally gonna opt out of the system. The system will start to crash in a hurry, <laughs> you know, even faster than it is now. I mean, now it's on a controlled descent. Um, you know, I, I'm not talking about going back to the, to, the, to, to another revolution because that, that's one of the furthest, furthest things from my mind. I try to avoid that at all costs. Um, I would rather see the peaceful dissolution of the state. Yeah, yeah. Revolution uh, scares the absolute <clears throat> shit out of me. Yeah, I mean, I prepare it like like it's going to happen, but I'd rather not. Um, you know, and and because uh, that, but I, I still think, you know, I, I've heard I've heard Kokesh talk about this, where you know he kind of figured out the numbers of what he thought it would take. Um, I, you know, ten, maybe twenty million. You know, that's still not that much, not that many when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. But if, if just that many people just said, yeah, we're done with this game. <laughs> I mean, yes, would, would, would the state ratchet up the game at that point? Absolutely. But every step they take, even now, is awakening more, you know, awakening more and more people every day. You know, I, you know, I look at myself a couple of, you know, a few years ago, I didn't know any of this stuff. And now here I am advocating it with everything I've got. I'm, I'm you know. I have two little, you know, I have, I, have, I have little three and a half year old girls that I'm, uh, <laughs> that I'm bringing, I'm trying to bring up as little anarchists, um, you know, and you know, I've met people like you guys that that were the same way, you know, only in the past couple of years, mm -hmm. wow. it's exploding, and people are, you know, every misstep the government makes, you know, if you can just ignore the BS in the media, and you can see through to the, you know, what's actually happening. More and more people are going. Hey, wait a minute! This isn't adding up anymore. And that goes back to the to the Rand quote earlier about the contradictions. It's like, oh, wait a minute! Ran into another one. Something's <laughs> wrong here. I mean, yeah, there's a reason why we're having this conversation. I mean, I don't think it would have been happening 50 years ago, right? Uh, well, no. If it if it was, it would have been. There probably would have been two of us, and we would have been hiding in the back room. <laughs> <somewhere Yeah. me. laughs> but um, um, but yeah, we're, we're running on an hour and 15 minutes, so um. So maybe we'll. Uh, I think we have some great topics for the next one. Like we, we, you know, we brought up net neutrality and you know government schools. We can go more in depth into that and 
and also maybe uh, you know authoritarian regimes like communism and socialism. I think those would be awesome topics for the next. Also, also um, you know why <clears throat> certain people prefer you know anarchists or voluntarists or anarcho capitalists. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are, we, the, we we have some good stuff to add on that those topics. Yeah. So Definitely. so anything you guys want to leave with any uh, any final final words before we sign off this episode. Dave? Well, I wanted to end with a quote, and this is the banner of my group, and it's a really good quote, and I want everyone to really, really absorb it. It's, mental slavery is mental death, and every man who has given up his intellectual freedom is the living coffin of his dead soul. It's by Robert Greene Ingersoll, who is a statist, but it is a great quote for everyone. It's not about accepting voluntary it's not accept, about accepting voluntarism as much as it is never ending your thirst for knowledge and eventually the truth will seek you out if you are drilling into the well of knowledge so that's my thing is is don't stop when you think you have something figured out you become an idiot <laughs> what did socrates say when he spoke to the oracle who's the wisest man in the world the Oracle said, you are. And he said, I don't know anything. <laughs> so that's why he was the smartest. He knew that he knew nothing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> nice. people that say they know everything are the fools. And I'll pass it to Jeremy. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a quote at the ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. I'll uh, be the no, quote guy. <laughs> I'm, I love quotes. <laughs> Stop, man. They inspire me. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I, you're the video. Uh, you're the video guy. Yeah, that 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 that, that that's my ro that's my role. I, I seek out, you know. Uh, Which I am gonna go buy and get every one of your videos and put them into a YouTube. Uh, I already have. I already have it on my on my on my. Um, I have it saved already. I, I have a list growing. <laughs> because in a year's time, that's gonna be 365 videos that you can just be like, star with this one and watch all of them. <laughs> yeah, it'll actually be. Like, it'll, it'll be more than that because I did a couple of days of multiple ones. But, uh, well, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you got what I was saying, but still, <laughs> like, I have a few playlists that I send people. I'm like, hey, if you got any questions, just check out these videos, and I'll talk to you about them. But if you had somebody 365, like, that's like weeks of watching stuff yeah. that you could be like, get back to me when you finish this. <laughs> <list."> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will, I will, I will finish off by building off a little what, what you were saying um, about you know just not stopping and uh, you know just keep keep educating yourself and 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 keep and, and you know like you said the truth will find you eventually. But that's, I mean, that's how I've done it. I, you know, through through just watching video after video and reading reading as many books as I can. You know, me, I'm a I'm a big podcast uh, and audio book listener because uh, I have a I have a pet sitting business, so I I, I spend six to six to ten hours a day between driving and walking dogs. <laughs> Literally, just me and my dogs. So <laughs> and uh, hard to walk around with a book. <laughs> well, they're they're good they're good company, but they're not great conversationalists. So I got to do something <laughs> all the time. So uh, I'm always listening to stuff. And yeah, I I still think I know nothing. Um, you know, I mean, my my friend my friends and family will probably tell you differently because they think I think I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You just have a loud voice, Jerry. That's all. I, I do. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just you know it's. Like you, like you said earlier, Dave. You know, once you reach this point, there's no going back. It's you know, people use the rabbit hole analogy, and uh, you know, it's it's true. It's you know, it. I, I, I said it earlier. Everybody, every half half intelligent person, if they put their just give it a shot and just start reading and just start just start questioning. You know, we were all you know, most of us when we were younger, we came across the phrase question authority somewhere. But not enough of us took it seriously, or only took it to a certain extent. Like I always used to think I did. I always used to think I used to question everything, and I was, you know. But looking back on it, I realized there were certain things that I had I had roadblocks up for, and I, I I just had blinders on. I just wouldn't I wouldn't see it. I I would question to a point, and they'd be like, "Oh no, that's just the way," it, you know. Or I would get the response, "That's just the way it is," and I would accept that, you know. And and I don't do that anymore. And that's that's what I'm trying to teach my kids. You know, I, I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do, you know, we're trying to do the peaceful parenting thing with them and I'm, I'm trying to get them to understand logic and reason as soon as they possibly can. Cause that's one of the most important things I think that where is purposely withheld from us, you know, 
get, you know, before not getting too much into a topic for a next show, but the, the government schooling we're talking about, it's logic is purposely withheld from us, um, except in the except in the very small realm of mathematics when we're, you know, if we're taught that part of it. Other than that, we're not really, you know, and there's a reason for that because once you start thinking logically, you start making the connections and you realize that there are no contradictions and you start checking premises and that's when everything starts to come together. So, uh, you know, I, I'll echo Dave a little bit, you know, just actually the best advice I was ever given at the beginning of my journey. And a lot of people, you'll see it a lot of times, you'll see it in hashtags on Twitter. You'll see people throw it up on other social media sites. You'll hear, you may even hear people say it. It's so simple, but it's so true. And it was just read Rothbard. <laughs> that's where I got my start. That's how I was going to end the show. So uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be like, read Rothbard, yeah, read Rothbard, not, read Rothbard. He's not the all be all because I don't want anybody jumping on me right away for that. He, he he isn't, but he's a nuclear warhead of cognitive dissonance. He's a wonderful. Well, I was going to say he's actually he's one of the few gateway drugs I approve of. You know, <laughs> we, can get, <laughs> we can get into that conversation another time. But we need to do an entire Rothbard episode. We really do. We will. Episode 10. Mark it down, Danilo. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, just, uh, just just start reading. Just start questioning things, and uh, you'll be amazed at what you can find. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I really like what you said, Dave, about, um, you know, ad admitting that you don't know, right? Because I think that's also um, that's a great encapsulation of uh, volunteerism and, and anarchism is that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how people are going to act, you know. So stop trying to make a law to force people to act the way you think they should act, right? Stop trying to, you know, steal money from this guy because you don't think he deserves it, <laughs> right? You know, stop stop being the little dictator, right? Because that's what democracy is. We're all little dictators, right? Stop trying to control people, basically. <laughs> it's very, very simple ideology, um, and uh, and I remember when I when I was first introducing these concepts to my parents, especially my mother, <laughs> and uh, one of her things was you know like um, if she said if you were in charge of this wait no she said in your little anarchist society how would you do this how would you do the roads how would you do the education? I'm like the whole idea is it's not up to me <laughs> the whole idea is you know I don't know what's gonna happen you know that. Things will work out. You know, you don't need a central authority planning and regulating and taxing, right? Like, like you know, how does the jungle manage to survive, you know, millions of years? Was there a central authority, you know? Like, how, how do, you know, like what is an economy? You know, an, an economy is just basically people getting together and exchanging. That's, you know, on a fundamental basis, that's what an economy is. And you expand that out to you know, thousands and millions of people, and you have a really magnificent, beautiful organism that we call the economy. And and for some reason, people tend to think, you know what, that needs some violence. You know, it doesn't have enough violence in that in that equation. <laughs> we should add some guns to it, right? So we should put some people in power. So so that's that's what I love about anarchy is it's it's humble, it's it's an admission of humility, right? And the same thing with peaceful parenting is it's admitting that even though you know, we lived many more years or, you know, a lot of years and we have some experience that our kids don't have. That doesn't mean we know everything, right? Like we, we can make mistakes. If we lay down too many rules on kids and what they should and shouldn't do, you know, that's not good either. Like, you know, of course, you know, the basic things like, you know, don't let your kid get hit by a car. But <laughs> aside from that, you know, we don't really know. Like we don't know. We're not experts in life, right? We just lived a few more years than them. Okay. But that doesn't make us experts, right? And and well, it doesn't uh, make them experts either. No, no, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so we we should give them the same respect. I mean, how many times does an older person say, "You know, well, you don't even really know what you're talking about"? Yeah, <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, not a, that's a straw man. That's yeah, because yeah. I'm because I'm older. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you might know more about being older than me. You're <laughs> when, you, when when you get to be my age, you'll understand. <laughs> yeah, when you get to be my age, damn it, I got to wait forty years to understand that one question. Oh, damn it, that's gonna, that's gonna be rough. But yeah, um, yeah, the, the the answer will be in the mail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 
So that's what I love about anarchy is, is it's, you know, fundamentally humble, right? And we are admitting that we don't know, even though we speculate as to how a voluntary society might work, you know, those are pure speculation. And the market may come up with infinitely better and more efficient um, ways of doing things, right? And, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it's the, it's the consumer. I, actually, you know, I, I was watching a recent video, um, I think it was Learn Liberty, and they were saying that uh, in, in a free market, the beautiful thing about, about competition is that the consumer is in control, basically. The consumer controls what products will succeed and fail, right? And businesses always, or business owners, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, employers, they always want to protect themselves because, because essentially in a free market, the consumer has the power to you know, make or break a business, right, with their patronage or lack of patronage. And so it's, it's, more, it's more to the uh, employer's advantage to use the guns of government to control and, and erect barriers to entry for their particular business. So it's their, to their advantage to use the guns of government, right? <clears throat> so... So that's what's beautiful about it, is the consumers are in control, <laughs> and people have to realize that, right? So, oh yeah, just try to start fracking on your own land up there in New York. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's what I love about anarchy, and um, and I think um, seeds of liberty. I know Dave came up with the great title. Um, the way I look uh, at we, it, we were we worked on it. It wasn't me. Come on. <laughs> the way oh, I look, don't put it on me. Come on. The way I look at it is like you know we're like the little Johnny Apple seeds of, of volunteerism, just spreading you know seeds and and you never know where they're going to plant right so as much as possible this is the reason why everywhere i go it doesn't matter you know i'm in the playground in the library in the park in the grocery store you know i try to talk about this stuff as much as possible um you know of course subtly you know you don't just go up to somebody and say taxation is theft <laughs> <laughs> but um i try to you know put little I like, I, yeah yeah I, I try to you know slot it under the radar and then be like well you know actually this is all bullshit <laughs> yeah, yeah i try to do that because um you never know where it's going to take hold you don't, you don't know where people are in their lives and what they're um open and receptive to to receiving and uh, you know what what they're gonna you know you know that's interesting you know you're not the first guy that told me that right yeah. <laughs> so so that's what i encourage people to do is just to speak it you know and um and just um, yeah, let everyone know what you think when you when you feel like I think I forget who said the quote, but um, basically, if if you know a truth, then your duty is to spread it, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. um, which again sounds kind of evangelical, but um, I mean, you know, you're not using force to spread it. You're just you know talking to people, which is you know completely fine. People can choose to listen or not listen, right? So, so yeah, so um, this is uh, this would conclude the first pilot episode of our uh, Seeds of Liberty podcast. So thank you for listening um, and hopefully we're going to be making many more. <laughs> if oh we, yeah. If we get... What's the, the, in, the ending quote for this show is plant seeds don't start fires. And that's what our next episode is going to be on as well. Right, Jeremy? Awesome. That's right. Awesome. I mean, Beautiful. Thank you, Danilo. Thank you, Jeremy. Great thank job. Thank you. So this is uh, okay. Seeds of Liberty with uh, Dave, Jeremy, and Danilo wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace.